Hey, love. This week's episode of the podcast is slightly different and not what I planned. And so you get to see, uh, uh, if you're watching this on video, you get to see a whole load of awkward because I am still way more comfortable responding and doing the interviews where I get to chat and ask other people questions and respond to them and work in that way. And for various reasons, I have not been able to get the next episode uh, ready in time to release because uh, I had a really, really wonderful guest all lined up and they are still coming, um, but we weren't able to organise everything in time. And I'm travelling at the moment and when, and which is why I batch record all of my podcasts and when I'm travelling it's less easy to um, yeah, to organise these things. Anyway, all of that to say that today's episode of the OR Adulting with Ebony podcast is a very personal one. And if you are a patron of the podcast, if you are a member of the Mavenhaven community, then you will get access to the patron part where I kept a video diary of my journey with ADHD meds. And I am now seven weeks into this journey and I, I did say I wanted to do two months um, and I was going to record this in a couple of weeks and I actually feel ready to share it now but the patron part of the podcast will be uh, an edited together um, series of kind of diary entries throughout the journey of titrating um, ADHD meds and this episode uh, and and so just kind of add a caveat for that like it's um it's particularly for you if you have ever been curious about what it might be like for you but I also want to really say it's a very very personal journey and that my journey with dopamine and dopamine seeking has very much been one of or an exacerbation of my relationship with food, which if I look back at my, with the wisdom that I have now, if I look back on my journey and I look at how I came into this world. So for those of you who haven't read my book, I was born at 26 weeks, weighed three pounds, spent the first three months of my life um or you know a period of time 12 weeks or thereabouts in an incubator in in France um without my parents and um was was fed through a tube and was not able to be breastfed not through any fault of my parents who really really wanted to give me the best the very best start that they could and who were hugely ahead of their time and very much into you know what we would these days call holistic health and well-being and embodiment and and <laughs> part of my journey now as someone who is has dedicated their life to embodiment who is in numerology a soul five um who has a lot of lessons of the corporal to learn in this lifetime I can really see how being fed through a tube, lying down, not learning to regulate my appetite, um, not learning to regulate my nervous system, um, impacted my relationship with dopamine and with food and with intimacy and you know all sorts of things in in such a beautiful way right because the whole soul journey and soul path is is that it's is absolutely beautiful so the patron part of the podcast does come with a trigger warning about disordered eating and about drugs um particularly cocaine and also um speed or amphetamines this episode is 
I have kind of lovingly called medicine, the one about medicine, maven mastery, self-acceptance and maturity. And the reason for that is that I can really see that so much of my own personal medicine in the really shamanic sense has been around self-acceptance and my journey of maturity has been one of <laughs> meeting all of the parts of myself particularly the part that felt like they were different and was a misfit and all, all of the not belonging part and, and meeting my and, and the way that that showed up or has shown up for me in, in most of my life has been around my body and not um, believing it to be beautiful, having huge dysphoria around what it looks like, um, desperately, desperately trying to conform to beauty standards that, you know, are unhelpful at the best of times. Growing up in the 90s, um, having a, a severely dysregulated nervous system being undiagnosed autistic and ADHD until you know, last year, 42. Um, all of those things have really contributed to this beautiful, perfect soulscape journey of, of, of medicine, of, of maven mastery, of self-acceptance and maturity. And so when I said to my community that I was... Um, embarking on this journey with ADHD meds every single person that I mentioned it to was surprised and a little concerned and, and they fall into two camps and the surprise was because I have always been somebody who is very much into holistic health who um, works a lot with plants plant medicines with um routine and ritual and habits and relaxation and creating a life that fits around my human design and who I am and so much of the misfit to maven journey and the story from ah to ah has been about self-awareness and like learning who I am and, and moving from victim to creator and choosing to live differently, choosing to live in a way that works for me, choosing to redefine success and to create a life as unique and extraordinary as I am, that genuinely feels as good on the inside as it perhaps looks on the outside. And, you know, that is what I have been doing in my business, in my life for myself and for my clients since 2012, 2014 officially. And as I come up to you know, roughly 10 years since I published um, Misfit to Maven, the book, and or definitely since I wrote it, um, and came up with the Misfit to Maven way and have been working through that, I've reached this place where I am moving from, you know, it's no longer about a Misfit to Maven journey, but it is about a Maven mastery journey. And instead of being like, about not belonging about not fitting in about not being the same as um, and comparing myself to others this part of my journey particularly since the end of my last company since the kind of tower card moment that led to the end of really really important friendships the last couple of years have been about the next kind of level of that of if I am no longer a misfit if I am if I have a, a certain standard and a level of self-acceptance and universal love for myself what then like if I am no longer available for or here to tolerate othering myself if I am able to fully shine in my own life what's next 
and there have been lots of uncomfortable inconvenient decisions that I have made along the way moving countries changing the structure of my business unfollowing people working with my human design working with my gene keys understanding my son which is gate 56 which at the one end is distraction and the middle is enrichment uh, and at the top is intoxication and really like noticing where things enrich me and where they are intoxicating and where they are a distraction and and finding my way with all of that and allowing myself to move into this new chapter and part of my life. And I just had my, so my 43rd birthday in July. And just before that, on the 26th of June, I had my, my midlife crisis or my, my Uranus conjunction, which for me and for anyone born in, in the same year as me, we have a really interesting thing happening this year where it, it's it, where Uranus is retrograde and so it doesn't it's not going to return just once I get three returns over the next 18 months and there's something in that right of like you know what I am sharing with you today as you can tell by my fidgeting and my discomfort in my own body like two two things are happening here like one when I am asking the questions uh, I'm much more comfortable right um and I'm really good at being vulnerable and creating intimacy in a space where the spotlight is not on me as the as the person who is telling unfinished private secret I don't know truths <laughs> um a lot of people think of me as someone who is very very open and who shares a lot and the truth is you know I am very open and if you ask me anything directly I will always tell you the truth I mean it's the, it may very well be the autism uh but I I'm I will always tell you the truth I am far too honest far too blunt uh sometimes but when the tables are turned and we're looking at my own personal journey there's a level of vulnerability and self-consciousness that makes it difficult for me. You know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a regular human being. Um, and so I simultaneously, as I'm sharing this message with you, I'm the most uncomfortable and kind of uneasy and unsure of myself um, that I have ever been. And at the same time, there is a level of self-acceptance and maturity that means that, that that's okay. That I have taken the armour that I used to wear, the fierceness that I used to wear, the confidence that I used to wear, like all of these layers of defence, of protection, of security off. And as I have taken them all off, I have found myself meeting my own shadows. I found myself meeting my most pure self. And she's sweet and loving and genuine. And wants the best for herself and for everyone else. And as I meet this version of me, as I as I meet the the, the open, the pure, undefensive or undefensed version of myself, and as I step into becoming an elder or looking to accept my own wisdom and take a place as a wisdom keeper and a guardian for truth and for self-actualization and for self-acceptance and for the initiations into maturity and for adulting and for remembering what a glorious fucking adventure this life gets to be that your soul that our you know that our souls that my soul signed up for in this human body at this day you know in this day and age at this time all of that stuff 
Like I, it is very, very exciting. And it, I am ready to lean into more. And whereas before, a lot of the more that I wanted came from a place of proving that I am a valuable, useful human being, right? That came through the lens of capitalism, of patriarchy, of consumerism, of commoditization, you know, all of that, of like seeing myself as a commodity and being like, how much can I produce? How um, successful can I be? Can I scale? Can I get to six figures? Can I get to seven? Can I promote a team? Am I being... Uh, selfish by not having greater impact oh no I mustn't be selfish I must have a greater impact in the world like all of that has really really been my story and as I moved away from that as I released the conditioning I'm really came to be with like who I am is enough who I am is a gift who I am impacts others I started to shift the ratios of of where I was spending my time and my intention and my attention and realizing that actually I've done the time of climbing the hill of of putting the work in I've done way over my 10,000 hours in terms of building a business in terms of understanding myself my craft my my medicine you know what I am here for how I help others um and that's not to say I want to stop doing those things you know I love my work and it is a calling and not a career and and there was also this part of me that wanted space to heal for myself that wanted space to be a woman just a woman, you know, a pussycat mermaid, um, and, and a lover and a sister and a friend, and part of a community and part of a village that could raise my nieces, my godchildren, my, you know, all of those things. Like I needed to work less. I wanted to work less. I wanted to be in communion with my own body and to find real love for this skin I am in. I wanted love, connection, intimacy, my person. I wanted to not have that be for show and for my brand and for my work, but just for me. And leaning into those desires slowly in a following the inquiry of that, not pushing it was what led to my diagnosis of both ADHD and autism and wanting to and, and and hearing from the I went private I got my diagnosis I've talked about that before but hearing from them you know the way that you live all the tools the trips the, the tricks the the essentially everything I teach in the fundamentals um is such a good grounding like you're doing incredibly like this is amazing like we more people need to know this stuff we need to be sharing this stuff um beyond that there was also a kind of and what else like how how might my life have been different if I'd known about this earlier um, did I want to know about it earlier what do I do now that I know about it now and and I am really happy that I only found out now like I like my whole journey has been my whole journey and has led me to the wisdom that I have you know there's no way I would have the appreciation for my body for my health for my vitality for my life if I hadn't had the disregard disconnect disgust for it you know it's it's the contrast that that has created this for me and wanting to increase my income and increase my business again after a period of, of really bringing it down and wanting to increase um, the attention and intention that I was giving my body in terms of movement and air and um swimming and and 
relaxation and, and body work and you know all of the, those good things um and wanting to keep the spaciousness to create art and to be in nature and to be alone and to my um, five two in human design so really to have that two time to hone it and <laughs> then wanting to be a good sister and a good friend and a um yeah all of those those things a good aunt um by good i mean involved engaged present and wanting to be a lover and a partner to my person what i found was i just didn't have the capacity and that i would get to about 3 30 and be completely exhausted and or I, I I would have periods of being able to travel and really show up and really being in my five and really you know being the messenger, being the heretic, being out there, and then I would retreat into this too and just be incapable of anything for a little while. And I don't mind that. Like I love my own company and I love being alone, but I also still wanted to admit, like I didn't want to disconnect completely. I wanted to still be a present lover. I still I wanted to be present for myself and my health. And and I was just finding that I couldn't fit it all in. And oh I, and I am I am gonna go there. And at the end of last year, I had also kind of reached this place with my body where I was like, listen. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to meet you in relationship, to, to be there for you, to support you, to, to have the health that I want. At 40, I had uh, the whole kind of everything, everything done. You know, how healthy am I? What's going on on the inside? What are my bloods? What are my thyroid? What is my liver? Like all of these, what's going on with me? And I found that I had super high blood pressure and I hadn't, my whole life it had been low. And I found that I had high blood pressure um, and non-alcoholic fatty liver from um I was going to say from being overweight but actually there are people in my family who are not overweight at all who also have it so it's kind of a hereditary thing right of, of non-alcoholic fatty liver uh, and it hadn't reached reached disease um but it but it was they were flagging it the doctors were flagging it and so there was this real thing of like okay I'm going to do whatever it takes and I was was in the same way as I have my whole life really um really eating less, exercising more, um, and if only it was as simple as that, right? Um, and I just wasn't getting the results that I wanted or this or a significant impact in any way. Um, and I was ready to have a gastric sleeve operation. And I began putting the money, doing all of the research, doing my due diligence, speaking to some friends who had had it done, and putting the money away to do that and that kind of journey started last October and by December I was ready I had made my decision I was going to go ahead in January and I had been continuing my communion with with the plants with Gaia with soul soul spirit and I had this um this call from the mycelium network that I talked a little bit around um, in in season six episode one in the Patriot Park podcast with Emma Smallbone talked about that a little bit there of, of being really called by the mushrooms and so in December at the end of December uh, 2022 I did um, a journey with some wonderful wonderful beings who I highly recommend who are now doing retreats in Portugal but at the time they're in Spain and I did a journey and the wisdom, the map, the, the information that came through from that journey was this is an option for you, but it isn't the way forward right now. You can do this yourself um, and, and gave me some kind of guidance about how. And so I came back and for the first three months of 2023, I followed that guidance and it was I was able to and it was easy and I started to lose some weight see some see some difference um but not enough and it was hard and I again like sat in meditation sat with 
carpe with um, different plants, with, with with my own teachers, you know, with all of it, and um, and was growing my own mushrooms and working with different mushrooms and was microdosing. And I had this beautiful afternoon where the wisdom again, the same voice, the same call, said, "There is another way." You know, we I don't you don't need to do this. Um, in a in a in a big dramatic swing of the pendulum there is a way to do this slowly gently softly in continuation of the work that i have been doing for the last two or three years and they uh, this wisdom was very clear that i um should could investigate what uh, medicating adhd and see and 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 that was then also off the back of a, a conversation I had with Natalie McIver, which is on, on the podcast where we talked about dopamine seeking. And one of the other ways that I had been dopamine seeking was in relationship, um, inadvertently kind of not causing drama, but but prodding and poking and needing a, a dopamine hit. And, you know, before I, I have talked a little bit about uh, easing and weaning myself off a norepinephrine um, addicted love. Look at me, I'm so fidgety. Um, because of the way that I was born, I I know that there was norepinephrine present the first time I experienced love and that that can um, impact how we love and, and the amount of noradrenaline or norepinephrine that we need in our love relationships. And I spent uh, many years investigating and healing that for myself and some of that is is present in my work now and you know I am I am no longer interested or attracted to bad boys or to relationships that hurt me no longer codependent um no longer mm, no longer overgive no longer martyr myself relationships however um, I was still finding that there was some like if I was really honest with myself there was some behavior that wasn't cool and so the mushrooms were like you know speak to the psychiatrist the prescribing psychiatrist speak to, to speak to somebody about medicating and so I did and I had a wonderful wonderful conversation with a um so I, I got my diagnosis privately. I have referred quite a few of my friends and clients on to the company that I used. I don't get anything for doing that, by the way. Um, but I just think that they are really good, great humans. And this um, pharmacist is a wonderful, wonderful woman who was able to really listen to me and able to listen to what I was saying and really heard what I was saying and really agreed with what I was saying that there that I was doing a lot that the way that I was uh, looking after myself in terms of nutrition and meditation and um, all of the kind of the cold water swimming and the um, increasing my vagal tone and just all of the holistic health stuff that I was doing was wonderful and that it might really work to use ADHD meds in a very particular way for me, like in a, um, yeah, considering my history, um, to address the do dopamine seeking in food and in intimacy. So it's been seven weeks. And I have seen so much. Um, I have really, really had to meet myself at another level. I have re-met a lot of old shame and loved it hard um, and watched it evaporate and alchemize. I have met a lot of old patterns and stories um, around food and around love. I have found a new level of self-love and acceptance a new level of maturity 
I have met these medicines, these allopathic medicines, these drugs, with the same reverence as I would any plant. And it has been life changing for me. Um, for the first time in my life, and as a woman who has spent a lot of time really working on embodiment, I can feel, you know, when I go for acupuncture, I can feel without knowing the meridian system, without knowing all of the information on purpose, because I like to be able to tune into the magic. I can tell what is happening in my body and what they have worked on and then say, did you do this, this and this? And they will say, yes, that's what I did. And uh, when they have any kind of body work, they, whoever I work with, are always really, really surprised by the level of embodiment and um, I'm not surprised, but kind of acknowledge the relationship that I have with my body. And there has been like one bit of my tummy <laughs> I just have not been able to reach with that same level of connection. And the ADHD meds for me have helped me distinguish, first of all, between thirst and hunger and helped me access parts of my, yeah, parts of my stomach, parts of my core, parts of my solar plexus, parts of my sacral that I didn't have precise access to before so I guess overall I am pleasantly surprised by this journey and I, it has also massively impacted my um my cycle like the part of my cycle where I was and have experienced PNDD symptoms for as long as I can remember, because I have tracked, because I have understood my cycle, because I have done all of this embodiment work, you know, all of those things, um, it, this has been another layer which has really eased the symptoms for me. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do that is that as I move through the latter half of my 40s towards perimenopause and then menopause, I wanted to give myself the best shot, really, in terms of levelling out um, the, the dopamine, because it's just another layer of hormonal complexity, right? And so I guess I want to end this main episode by saying this the journey with medication or medicating ADHD for me has not been one of take a pill hope it goes away you know or not look at what's going on underneath you know it's been a it's been a, a journey of reverence um one that right now has a happy outcome that I'm you know really really pleased with um in terms of the weight um I actually because I'm traveling I haven't weighed myself I um I did I did did buy some smaller jeans today um I am still much much larger than I want to be than I've ever been you know all of those things but my blood pressure very very quickly um came down into the healthy range and has remained there and that is massive for me um, the body fat is decreasing my ability to exercise and enjoy it throughout my whole cycle has increased um, and I guess the main thing that I want to share is that if I had not done the embodiment work the empowerment work the self-actualization work the, the the honest truth work the meeting my edges work this would have been a lot harder um, in many ways and I don't think it would have been necessarily as powerful or as life-changing now that's I, I cannot compare it and I um and I and I'm not sure whether I advocate one way or the other like I don't know whether I want to say yes go and try ADHD meds or I want to say no or have some caution because ultimately what I really want in the same way as I say this across all of my work is I want for, for you to tune into your body and make that decision for yourself. Because nobody knows 
your body like you do. Nobody knows the exact right answers to the exact right questions that that for you than than you, right? Like you have this information within yourself. If you want to learn how to meet it, how to recognize it, how to see it, how to listen, how to ask, please come and work with me. I'm really, really into getting you your valley filter, helping you find your compass, understanding the map, getting the, the fundamentals is this really solid foundation on which to build the rest of your life. If you are looking to be more resourced and have a deeper level of intimacy in your life, then I highly, highly recommend coming and working with me in some capacity because that is what I have been working on my whole life. And this kind of piece around maiden mastery, self-acceptance, maturity and medicine isn't as simple as taking the ADHD meds and, and it all being better. You know, yes, my executive function is better. Yes, uh, I have more focus. Yes, I can go off on a tangent and then come back to what I was talking about before. Um, yes, I don't... Um, cause drama in my relationships in the same way or is if I do I do it on part like it's conscious um you know there's all sorts of things and I think all of that is is possible because of the consciousness and because of the other work and because of the, the radical honesty and, and you know all of those other pieces so I think that's where I'm going to leave it today um I also absolutely recommend the patron part of the podcast um in it there is a lot more around my journey like a real uh yeah I'm, we're gonna piece together my my kind of video diaries of, of what it was like and you can hear me wired and high you can hear me like really in some of the shamey stuff around like what was happening for me um and and it does come with a trigger warning around disordered eating and drugs um but I, but I, and sorry, and I highly recommend the patron part of the podcast in terms of supporting artists and creators that you love. If you like listening to me, if you value my honesty, uh, my presence, the way I show up, then supporting the patron part of the podcast is a really, really great way to do that. And, and it's five pounds a month. Um, and if you want to be a part of a community of like-minded people that is intimate, where you get access to me, um, you know, 24-7, you can tag me whenever you want in questions and I will come and answer. It is a community space, so it isn't a, a coaching, it isn't a course, like it is designed to go alongside my self-study courses. Um, and you get out what you put in. So the more you show up in the space, the more you contribute, the more you ask questions, the more you will get out of it, but you have that access to me. That is £33 a month or 99 a quarter because I want you to come and join a season at a time, which allows us to develop relationships, right? Um, if you are in the Maiden Haven, then you get the Patreon part of the podcast for free. And I have some incredible guests coming up this season, which I'm very, very excited about. And we'll be talking with more rawness realness vulnerability uh, around the stuff that actually matters to me around living in awe of life and, and adulting what that really truly means to be an initiate <laughs> of maturity and self-actualization so for now thank you for listening if you have any questions about this episode if you want to talk to me further about it if you want any recommendations if i can give them i will please come and find me on Instagram at Ebony Alchemy and slide into my DMs. Uh, and obviously, if you're in the community, ask me directly inside the Maven Haven and I will respond for now. I'm sending you loads of love. I hope this has been helpful. I would love your feedback and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.